Good morning, BSRT2 students. Welcome back to our virtual classroom. Again, this is RT212 Radiation Production and Characteristics. Okay, so, kumusta kaya yung mga BSRT2 students? Um, wala ba kayong difficulties when it comes to my lecture sa online? I think wala naman kasi wala naman akong nare-receive na complaint or mga major uh, questions. So, the Past two days, isa lang yung na-receive kong question. This concern to a student na nagtanong, particularly after finishing the discussion on the radiographic exposure technique guides. So, nagtanong siya kung okay lang ba? Kasi sabi ko daw doon, um, kung hindi maganda ang kuha, kailangan i-repeat yung procedure. So, nagtanong siya, Sir, okay lang po ba mag-repeat tayo ng x-ray? Kasi pagkakaalam ko, kailangan mag-repeat tayo ng x-ray after 6 months kasi in, within a span of 6 months, kailangan once lang tayo makareceive ng radiation sa ating body. Tama ba yun, class? Okay, so probably you have the same inquiry pero nahihiya lang kayo. Probably this morning, uh, mabigyan natin ng justice yung question na yan. And I hope you will devote some time to patiently listen to my lecture as well as watch, of course, the illustrations that I prepared for you. Okay, so this is uh, particularly important since you are now a radiologic technology student at marami kayong mga nababasa sa social media and all other sources related to radiation, some of which are misconceptions. Kaya you have to weigh some things, ano ba talaga yung mga important, which of the states, uh, statements that you are uh, reading or receiving are true or not. Okay? So, uh, now that you have learned that uh, when an atom converts from one form to another, likely it is accompanied with the emission of particles and energy. So, that energy, we term this as radiation. Okay, so, uh, along with that, you also learn that radioactivity is both naturally occurring and some were man-made. Therefore, one may assume that radiation, or the energy, can be both uh, man-made and naturally occurring. Okay, so before I start with my discussion, actually this is just a short discussion, so I want you to answer this question. So when you hear the word radiation, what comes into your mind? So some of you were, um, okay, so upon admission to the College of Nursing and Allied Health Sciences, I raised the same question. What was your idea since you want to be enrolled in the BS Radiologic Technology Program? And mind you, radiologic technology profession devote time in handling radiation as part of the diagnosis and prognosis of patient. So, isa rin ba kayo sa mga nag-aakala, wow, or nag-iisip that radiation can cause infertility? Sabi, uh, kayo ba ay sumagot na, sir, pag naririnig ko ang radiation, syempre, it is associated with nakakabaog. That's why yung mga ibang nag-answer niyan ay ask, so why do you want to be enrolled in a program na alam nyo naman yung trabaho is magdudulot ng pagkabaog? Sekreto lang natin to ha. Actually, may mga kilala akong radtech. Puro mga magurang it anak. Kaya direct na tuod nga nakakabaog ito hiya. Okay. So, isa rin ba kayo sa mga nagsabi na ang radiation ay nakakakos ng cancer? Kaya tinanong ko ulit. So, why do you want to be enrolled in a program na alam nyo naman yung trabaho ay magkakos ng cancer? So, isa yung yung magiging sagot ko dyan. Kung nag-cause nag yung radiation ng cancer, so we have the term radiation therapy. So, it uses cancer to... Oh, cancer, sorry. It uses radiation to treat cancer. Oo, so probably, madi-disregard natin yun. Or, isa rin ba kayo sa nagsabing ang radiation ay boom? So, it is associated with explosion. Siguro kasi, di ba, narinig nyo mga nuclear power plant explosion, yung, um, ano pa, atomic bomb, ba? 
So, I won't say no. Apo, these illustrations, I won't say no. So, that's why you are enrolled here in the BS Radiologic Technology Program because our main objective is the safe use of radiation para hindi magkos ng pagkabaog, para hindi magkos ng cancer, at para hindi magkos ng pagsabog. Okay, so... It basically starts with the definition of radiation. Ano ba talaga pag sa tingin nyo ang kahulugan ng radiation? At bakit natatakot ang maraming tao when it comes to radiation? Why are so many people afraid of the word radiation? So when we say radiation, this is the energy emitted and transferred through space. This is called radiation. We're not talking about the outer space here. So, a medium or a distance, di ba? So, energy emitted and transferred through a space is called radiation. Is sound a form of radiation? Yes, sir. Uh, is light a form of radiation? Yes, sir. Then, the, the sound causes infertility or does it cause cancer? Or probably explosion. Hindi naman, di ba? So, yung light ba nakakakos ng infertility? Nakakapagkos ba siya ng uh, cancer? Pagsabog? Di ba? Hindi naman. So, basically, um, probably hindi nyo pa na ito na-experience. So, tatanungin kayo ng mga tao, ano yung, uh, ano yung kurso mo? So, you will answer, BS Radiologic Technology po. Ano yan? Tagaayos ng radyo? Hindi po kami po yung ano, mag -e x ray mag-CT scan, and the likes. So, people might also ask you, di ba delikado yan? Di ba yung radiation nakakabaog? Di ba yung radiation nakakancer? Okay, so these are the most common misconception of the people. So, probably, they are referring to ano, the classifications of radiation. So, before that, so, ito yung mga basic example na meron da tayo dito. So, ito, when a piano string vibrates, it is said to radiate sound. So, the sound is a form of radiation. Di ba? So, actually, meron tayo class, ultrasound. So, um, um, for your information lang, added information na lang, actually, tra uh, sound is categorized into three types. So, what human ears can hear, it ranges from 20 to 20,000 hertz. So, what we, uh, we call them as the audible sound. So, below 20 hertz, that's what we call the infrasound. And above, that's what we call ultrasound. So, yan. Yung sound, nagagamit din yan in the, in the diagnosis, no? So, pasensya na po kasi natabunan. Uh, I was not expecting na mag-iiba yung format ng uh, cellphone at saka laptop ng uh, itong app na ginagamit ko. So, another example is the ripples or uh, waves radiate from the point where the pebble is dropped into the pond. So, may mga wave, wave, wave. So, this is a form of radiation, di ba? There's an energy. So, visible light, uh, a form of electromagnetic energy radiated by the sun is a form of electromagnetic radiation. Diba? Ultraviolet radiation. So, ito ba yung sound ba nakakakos ng cancer, yung uh, water wave or the sunlight? Diba? Hindi naman. Kasi kung takot kayo, huwag kang lumabas ng bahay. Ganun lang yun. Okay? So, are you sure na walang radiation sa loob ng bahay ninyo? Or are you sure that you, yourself, you're not a source of radiation? So, alim, alamin natin yan today. So, there are two classifications of radiation. First, we have the non-ionizing radiation. It is said to have a mechanism of action in matter that does not directly ionize atomic or molecular systems through a single interaction. So, class non-ionizing, which means it is not capable of ionization. So, ihang lang muna natin. We have the term ionize or ionization. Next, we have the ionizing radiation. So, it is a special type of radiation that includes X-ray. 
So ionizing radiation is any type of radiation that is capable of removing an orbital electron from the atom for which it interacts. This type of radiation or interaction between radiation and matter is called ionization. So basically, when we say ionization, this is removal of an orbital electron from the atom. So pag sinabi natin, non-ionizing, so hindi siya capable mag-remove ng atomic electron from the atom. So example, the sound. Oh, yan, sa MRI. So, they are not capable of ionizing. Okay, so they are not capable of removing an orbital electron from the atom. Here naman, we have X-ray. Okay, so we categorized this as ionizing radiation, which means this is capable of removing an orbital electron from the atom. Kaya ang tanong, ang tanong, ano ba talaga yung ionization? So, ito yun. So, ionization occurs when an X-ray passes close to an orbital electron of an atom and transfers sufficient energy to remove it from the atom. So, the ionizing radiation may interact with and ionize additional atoms. So, halimbawa, there is this radiation. Again, sabi dito, it passes close to an orbital electron. Then, anong ginagawa niya? It transfers sufficient energy. So, ibibigay niya yung energy niya sa orbital electron. Since masyado naman sigurong mabigat or, okay, so may effect talaga sa electron, so this electron will be technically removed from the atom. So, this is ionization. What happens then is that the orbital electron and the atom, which it was separated, are called ion pair. Ito na class. Ion pair in the sense that the electron, of course, this is a negative ion, and the remaining atom, since nagkulang na siya ng electron, this is now a positive ion. Okay, so when we say... Uh, Positive ion, di ba? We have the term an ion. And when we call or the term for negative ion, di ba? Cat ion. Di ba? We have the cathode, anode. Pag sinabing anode, positive side ng electrode. Pag sinabing cathode, negative side ng electrode. Okay, so yun ang ionization. So again, when we say uh, ionizing radiation, capable siya ng ionization. Non-ionizing is the opposite, of course. Okay, so there are different mode of human exposure to radiation. Okay, so paano ba magkakaroon ng interaction ang tao sa radiation? Una, this could be in a form of irradiation in which matter that intercepts radiation and absorbs part or all of it. For example, nagpa-X-ray ka. Diba? So, that's a form of irradiation. So, based sa ating discussion ng optical density, there is that attenuation. Diba? When we say attenuation, this is the reduction in the energy of the X-ray beam due to absorption and scattering. Kaya yun, nag-absorb. Hmm? Diba yung most attenuated X-ray appear as white on the radiograph. Those that pass through appear black on the radiograph. So, yun. Again, irradiation. Nag-pass through lang yung radiation sa isang medium. Okay. Or otherwise, pwede siyang naharang ng medium. So, that is irradiation. The other one naman is contamination. Hindi ito yung typical contamination, yung tipong, ah, marigsok na, kay contaminated na. No. Matter that has been irradiated and becomes a source of radiation, which means the person itself is the source of radiation. Oh, pwede ba yun, sir? Yes, pwede po. So, um, for example, in the nuclear medicine, so, we give that radiopharmaceutical, ano siya, that's a form of... Uh, Pharmaceutical nga, parang medicine, okay? Pero may radiation na kasama. Okay, so para ano? 
So, kasi, there, this is also in a form of diagnosis or otherwise treatment. So, uh, yung radiation, siya yung madidetect ng makina. Okay? So, yung medicine, siya yung, ang tawag dito, siya yung pupunta to that specific part of the body. Okay? So, kaya, when you go to the nuclear medicine, don't be afraid of the machine kasi walang radiation yung machine. Taga-detect lang yung machine. Like, for example, gamma camera or SPECT. Yung matakot kayo sa pasyente kasi nandun sa kanya yung radiation. What else? Halimbawa, ano, um, kung narinig nyo when uh, siguro way back 2011, nagkaroon ng explosion sa Fukushima, Japan. And people were so afraid na baka magkaroon ng contamination sa food. Okay, especially with the alpha particle. Yun. So, halimbawa, yung food is contaminated with radiation, tapos, of course, nakain natin, so the radiation will now be inside the body of the patient. So, the patient himself will be a source of radiation. Kaya nga, sa ating illustration, in the air, in by form of solid or liquid, na-ingest or na-inject sa patient, and then the radiation nandun na sa loob ng pasyente. Okay? So, uh, delikado ba yun, sir? In a way, delikado, pero there are forms, di ba, basically sa half-life, sabi natin, uh, na-eliminate din naman yung uh, substances through defecation, urination, breathing, and the like. Uh -oh. So, ano na, kumusta na tayo? No. So, we have sources of ionizing radiation. Sabi natin kanina, kasi when we discuss radioactivity, There are man-made and there are naturally occurring. So, makikita lang pala sa paligid. So, when you are afraid, so, ngayon, sasagutin ko na yung studyante na nagtanong, okay lang ba i-repeat? If you are afraid about radiation, matakot ka na class kasi yung radiation kung saan-saan lang pala. Sige, ito. Una, Okay, so we have the natural or background radiation. Tawag dyan, background radiation. So natural environmental radiation consists of four components. Cosmic rays, terrestrial radiation, internally deposited radionuclides, and radon. Ito, alam nyo na yan, class, cosmic rays. So... Uh, cosmic rays are particulate and electromagnetic radiation emitted by the sun and the stars. On Earth, the intensity of cosmic radiation increases with altitude and latitude. Okay, so ako nga talaga, um, parang nakukonfuse ako dito sa definition niya. Uh, electromagnetic radiation emitted by the sun and the stars. Kasi when uh, we were in high school, sabi ng teacher natin, the sun is also a form of a star. Diba? So, kaya nakakonfuse ako. So, pwede nating palitan yan. Cosmic radiation are particulate radiation and electromagnetic radiation emitted by heavenly bodies. Yan, para mas simple. Diba? So, um, yung basic tenets nito kasi, um, it's in the form of um, fusion, nuclear fusion, diba? Yung mga small elements like sa sun, o helium, nagsasama-sama. So, that's uh, nuclear fusion. On Earth, the intensity again of cosmic radiation. So, this is now with respect to cosmic radiation that's emitted by the sun. So, when you travel, uh, especially um, magkukommute ka, wow, magkukommute via plane, so, nag-iiba uh, nag ang intensity ng cosmic radiation with respect to yung taas ng Uh, pag-travel nyo na mula sa oh, mula sa Earth o oh, yan sa atmosphere wow kasasyal ano yan so cosmic rays so again kung takot ka sa radiation matakot ka sa araw wag ka na lang lumabas ng bahay kung ganon no so what I'm trying to say is radiation is not that thing to be afraid of ba diba? so uh, actually mas nakakatulong pa nga siya diba yan. Next, we have terrestrial radiation. Terry, which means Earth. If you are familiar with the movie Extraterrestrial, di ba? Um, extra meaning outside. Outside the Earth. Kasi alien siya. Kaya, 
terrestrial radiation or pwede nating sabihin geothermal radiation. So terrestrial radiation results from deposits of uranium, the thorium and other radionuclides on earth. So the intensity is highly dependent on the geology of the local area. So the earth itself pala is radioactive. Oo. So ito 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 yung uh, since you are second year student So, I can say that uh, marami pa kayong pagdadaanan para mas, uh, you can fully understand radiation. Meron pa tayong radiobiology as well as meron pa tayong radiation protection na subjects. So, I hope hindi pa yung mag-change yung mind nyo na gusto nyo talagang mag ng radiologic technology profession. Kasi may naririnig ako yung iba gustong mag-shift kasi hindi naman to talaga choice nila. Um, choice lang to ng parent nila kaya yung iba naman kasi naklosan ng ano ng uh, sa ibang colleges so no choice na na grad tech I hope hindi ganun yung reason nyo kasi sayang yung opportunity this is the first state university in the Philippines that offered BS Radiologic Technology Program sige balikan natin yung discussion natin we have internally deposited radionuclides So, internally deposited radionuclides, mainly potassium-40, are natural metabolites. Which means, nakakain din pala ang radiation. Mm -hmm. They have also been with us and contribute an equal dose to each other. Therefore, kung nakakain ang radiation, saan na pupunta ang kinain mo? Di ba sa katawan mo? So, therefore, you are, you as a person, you are a radioactive source. Oh, di ba? So, kailangan ba tayong matakot? So, we have, again, internally deposited radionuclides. Actually, may follow-up to class. When you, uh, if, hindi pa kayo mag-shift next year, so, we have the same, similar topic, pero medyo na, There are modifications, medyo na-tweak lang siya kasi to adapt into radiation protection aside. Okay, so do not be afraid again kasi nakakain din pala ang radiation. Sabi nga ni Edward ng BSRT3, potassium-40 rich daw sa banana. Uh, are, do you believe that? Uh, and I don't know. So, they also have been again with us and contributed an equal dose to each of us. So, which means, hindi pala kailangan matakot tayo sa radiation. Other than that, carbon-14. This is a naturally occurring radioisotope with a half-life of 5,730 years. So, the concentration of carbon-14 in the environment is constant. And carbon-14 is incorporated into living material at a constant rate. Diba, the tree, meron siyang carbon, carbon-14. So, halimbawa, sa bahay nyo, may mga furnitures kayo. Diba, it's made from trees. Okay, so, huwag na kayong umupo kung natatakot kayo sa radiation. Diba, I don't know about you. Ha? Balitaw. So, what we are trying to say here is that... Um, kailangan ma-educate tayo with the radiation itself, no? What else? We have radon. Radon is the largest source of natural environmental radiation. Radon is a radioactive gas that is produced by natural decay of uranium, which is present in trace quantities in the earth. Sige, before I explain further, basahin muna natin yung follow-up na uh, following... Uh, slide. So, all earth-based materials such as concrete, bricks, and gypsum wallboard contain radon. Radon emits alpha particles which are not penetrating and therefore contributes to a radiation dose only to the lung. So, kung yung bahay nyo ay gawa sa concrete, matakot na kayo. Balitaw. So, in, again, I would like to emphasize na radiation is not a thing that to be afraid of. Diba? All ground-based materials, concrete, bricks, and gypsum wallboard contain radon. Hindi naman tayo namatay doon. So basically, hindi, na, hindi tayo nagkaroon ng, hindi tayo nabaog doon sa concrete materials. So radiation class is everywhere. Okay, so those are the background or 
natural environmental radiation. Now we have man-made radiation or this is the artificial radiation. So diagnostic x-rays constitute the largest source of ionizing radiation. The benefits derived from the application of x-rays in medicine are indisputable. However, such applications must be made with prudence and with care taken to reduce unnecessary exposure of patients and personnel. Okay, so, uh, kaya meron kayong subjects na this one, radiation production and characteristics. Meron kayong subject, radiobiology, and of course, you have the radiation protection. What is the objective? Of course, para ma-reduce natin ang unnecessary exposure sa patient at saka sa personnel. Okay, so, um, according to our reference, medical x-ray constitute 90% of man-made ionizing radiation. Mm -hmm. So, iba-iba kasi yung uh, pag-categorize nila eh. I mean, in general na yung pag-categorize nila, CT scan, x-ray, radiation therapy, any uh, form of ionizing radiation which are used in the diagnosis and uh, management of diseases, so they are categorized under medical x-rays. Uh, example, radiation therapy. Hindi naman yan medical x-ray, but still, they categorize that under medical x-ray na uh, yan, classification. So, paano na lang kaya kung hindi na-discover ni Rentgen ang x-ray? What do you think is your, ano, kurso? Of course, nursing. Okay, but I don't know about uh, kung ano yung mga choices nyo, but... Um, Anyways, nandito na kayo sa Radtech, ano, what I'm trying, uh, kailangan, gawin na lang natin yung best natin. So, whether you like it or not, may mga purposes why you landed here in this program. At for now, hindi ko pa ma-assess yun. Okay, so, next, uh, among the man-made ionizing radiation is the nuclear power plants. So, siguro dito natatakot yung mga tao kasi pag marinig na nuclear, yung pagsabog agad, yung naiisip. Diba? Nuclear. Nucleus. Okay. So, we are referring to uh, composition of the atom. Diba? So, nuclear power plant or nuclear power stations and other industrial applications con contribute very little to our radiation dose. Very little. Okay. So, yung source kasi nila. Okay. So, uh, mula sa nucleus ng atom. So, yun. Again, Yung sabi niya dito, very little to our radiation dose. Kaya, walang dapat katakutan. Next, we have consumer products. So, consumer products such as watch dials, exit signs, smoke detectors, camping lantern mantles, and airport surveillance systems contribute 0.1 millisiever to our annual dose. Okay, so this is uh, less significant. Okay, so... Nakikita nyo to, smoke detector, no? So, kung mahilig kayong magpunta sa mga malls, hotels, and everywhere, so, there is radiation. Ito, sa airport surveillance system, kasi gumagamit sila ng radar. Radar, which is an acronym for radiation, uh -oh, rad, ra, radiation detection and ranging. Yung watch dials naman, class, only one brand, Timex. Pero hindi lahat ng Timex nag i ng radiation. Timex Indiglo. And we have the camping lantern mantles. Siguro matanda na ako at kayo ay bata pa, hindi nyo alam to. Hindi nyo naabutan ako. Medyo naabutan ko pa to eh, when I was still a child. So, tawag dito namin Petromax. yon So, uh, yon Consumer products. Next, we have, of course, ito yung medyo nakakatakot na. So, radioactive fallout. Kaya sabi ko, I don't disregard na it can cause infertility, cancer, and uh, explosion. Kasi nga, sabi ko kanina, kailangan we are knowledgeable with the safe use of radiation. Sabi pa nga, ulitin ko lang, Quatriona Gray, anything is good but should be in moderation. So, the deposition on the surface of the earth of radioactive particles released into the atmosphere 
as a result of nuclear explosions and by discharge from nuclear power and atomic installations. So, alam nyo naman yung uh, purpose uh, I mean, ng uh, ginawa nila sa Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So, class kasi, um, uh, may mga tinatawag tayong ano, uh, deposition ng mga radioactive materials. Sabi dito, if they are released into the atmosphere, yun, tapos, di ba, fall, papabagsakin, so, in the form of nuclear explosions, so, tawag na doon is radioactive fallout. Okay. So, dapat pa ba tayong matakot? In a way, di naman sabihin ano, kailangan hindi, uh, hindi pero sa mga uh, nabasa natin, especially that radiation or, or natural background radiation, hindi kailangan katakutan. So, anything is good, oo, but especially sa man-made, anything is good but should be in moderation. So, Classifications of human exposures. Paano ba tayo ma-expose sa radiation? Una, it could be in a form of background radiation. Through cosmic radiation. Kasi kailangan natin yan. Vitamin D. So, nagpapa-araw tayo. Yung iba, yung mga girls naman dyan. Kasi may mga ano na yung mga... Kung ano-anong nilalagay sa katawan. Hindi naman nag-change yung mukha. May mga pa SPF, SPF 40 pa. Oo, di naman nag-change yung mukha, kaya nasusunog lang tuloy. So, we have external or terrestrial radiation, terry, which means earth. So, these are radioactive substances deposited on the surface of the earth. And then, we have naturally occurring radioisotopes. Example, potassium-40 and carbon-14. So, yun, background radiation. Another thing na pwede tayong ma-expose, is through medical exposure. So, it deals with the intentional exposure of patient for diagnostic and therapeutic purposes by technically qualified medical and paramedical personnel. Ulitin ko lang ha, medical x-ray constitute 90% or the largest source of man-made ionizing radiation. So, intentional ha yung pagkaka-expose dito. Para saan? Para sa diagnosis and therapeutic purposes hindi para kung mag-selfie-selfie mag uh, gamit yung x-ray. Eh di, wow. Okay, so uh, again, technically qualified. Kailangan yung mag x ray sa'yo is RRT. Yun. Hindi pwedeng walang license. Okay, so uh, what else? Medical, so kung kailangan, matatawag mong medical if you are the patient. Other than that, if you are not the patient, you are the radiologic technologist, ikaw yung nag expose pa, Masasabi natin, it is in the form of occupational exposure. So exposure sustained by radiation workers as a result of the nature of their work. Sorry, sorry. Ah, sorry na, uh, na, na click ko. Pasensya na. There are, uh, okay. So, occupational exposures, exposure obtained by radiation workers as a result of the nature of their work, particularly in the radiation. Okay, so for, for example, as radiologic technologist. So, of course, as I've said earlier, So, we have to devote time kasi ito na yung profession namin. Dito kami kumikita. Ito na yung bread and butter namin. So, radioactive. Kayo din, in the future, you will be radiologic technologist. Ito na yung magiging bread and butter ninyo. Source of income. So, kailangan we have to be, okay, so educated, of course, knowledgeable with the use, uh, safe use of radiation. So, occupational kaparte ng trabaho. If you are the patient, of course, that's the medical. What if you are not the patient, you are not the rad tech, pero kasama ka sa, okay, kasama ka when nag, uh, relative, kaibigan, nagpa-x-ray, na-expose ka sa radiation, pwede ba yun? Anong matatawag natin doon? Okay, so that is exposure of the general public hindi ka pasyente, hindi ka radtech. 
So, you fall as under the general public. Exposure which might be received by individual or individual members of the population as a result of their visit to a hospital or walk by a hospital or live near one where there is a presence of any radiation sources. Okay, so uh, if you have questions, again, do not hesitate. You can reach me to different platforms and these are my references. Okay, so uh, again, ito naliwat. So, um, <laughs> daw masamo class palitaw. So, uh, if you have time, please um, refer to these uh, publications, these books, okay? So, that's all for now. And thank you so much for watching, for patiently listening to my lecture. This has been your teacher, your professor, your teacher, uh, instructor, vlogger at the same time, whatever. So, God bless, ingat, and if you, goodbye.